Okay, so the first thing we have to do is create our infused herbal oil that's gonna go inside the butter. This oil is inspired by Brie Hall's Extreme Herbal Hair Growth Oil, but I'm tweaking it a little bit and I'm using it inside the butter instead of as an oil by itself. So I'm using the same exact um, herbal hair oil mix that she used. You can buy this off Amazon. It's really cheap, it's like $7 and it's really good. It has a bunch of different herbs that are very good for promoting hair growth and hair strength. Most of the herbs are at the top and then at the bottom there are like some hibiscus flowers. So I'm just kind of pouring some of the herbs out so I can get to the hibiscus flowers at the bottom. So I can put that inside the mixture as well. Also, you guys might see me holding my phone up a bit in this video. It's because I'm making a reel for Instagram as well. <laughs> so once I have all the herbs inside of my jar, you can use any jar, it doesn't have to be a mason jar. Um, I'm going to start putting in my hair oils and I pretty much just picked oils that I know that my hair likes or that I feel like would benefit me and my hair needs. So I used 100% pure avocado oil. I used grapeseed oil. I also used a bit of jojoba oil. I used organic hemp seed oil. I also used 100% um, pure argan oil, another one of my favorite oils. And I used Jamaican black castor oil. And to top it all off, I used a lot of olive oil. I used, I think, the most olive oil, but I didn't do exact measurements for this, guys. I literally just poured oil until I felt like it was enough. You just wanna make sure that the herbs are covered completely by all the oils. For my essential oils, I use Lang Lang, Frankincense, and Clary Sage oils. Because this is for my hair and not necessarily my scalp, I didn't use any essential oils like directly for scalp health like a eucalyptus oil or peppermint oil. I just left those out. I honestly just use these three because I love the way that they smell. They give a really nice aromatherapy to the um, oil. And I also use a little bit of shebe powder. This is a herbal hair treatment that is widely used in Africa to help with strengthening the hair, keeping the hair from breaking, um, helping to retain length. It's not necessarily something that you use for hair growth, but you use it to help retain your length, which is really important for me and my hair needs because my hair is very fine and snaps very easily. So I really wanted to test this out and see if it could help to just reinforce my strands. So now you just want to stir it all up and it's best to let this sit for up to three weeks. I let mine sit for two weeks. I just put it inside of my windowsill and um, let the sun kind of get to it and help to infuse all those herbs. You really wanna make sure that you're shaking it up every day too to make sure that the oils don't settle. So like I said, I let this sit for about two weeks and now I'm ready to infuse it inside of my hair butter. So I just purchased some butters off Amazon. Now I didn't go with the typical cocoa or shea butter. I went with kupuwasu and mango butter. And these are just two oils that, or not oils, butters that I find really work well with my hair, especially with my strands being so fine. I don't really need a, an extremely heavy butter. And these two butters are very um, thick in consistency, but they absorb into the hair very well. So they won't weigh my hair down or oversaturate my very fine strands. And I mean, the longer you have natural hair, the more you'll be able to look at products and start to really see what ingredients your hair likes, what butters your hair likes, what consistencies your hair likes. And I just know my hair. <laughs> and these are two butters that I find in a lot of my hair products that work really well for me. And like I said, I really like the thinner like consistency of it compared to a heavy shea butter. So again, for my butters, I didn't use very specific measurements or anything. I'm using the whole pack of kupuwasu and then I just cut the bar of mango butter that I had in half. And um, since we're gonna be melting these, I just cut the mango butter up a little bit so that it will melt a little bit quicker. You honestly don't have to melt them before creating the butter but I wanted mine to have a more whipped consistency and in order to achieve that consistency, you do have to melt the butters first. I'm gonna use the double boil method in order to melt my butters. I just boiled a pot of water on my stove. I placed my butters into this little glass plate that I have, but you can use a bowl or anything that obviously won't melt over the boiling water. And I'm just going to place this on top. And this is a much better way to melt the butters rather than doing direct heat because it makes it so that you don't burn the butters. So you can move the butters around to help melt them, but really you don't have to. You can just let it sit. It's, it'll start melting on its own. 
And then once it's fully melted, you can just pour it into any bowl of your choice. I'm just using the stainless steel bowl because this is all I have. And before you whip it, it has to be at a cooler temperature. So I just put mine in my freezer for about 35 minutes. And while I let that sit, I just strained my oils. I bought this strainer off Amazon. I believe this is also the same exact one that Brie Hall used. It's a strainer that's made for juicing. So it's really good to help strain the oils out without getting like the powder and any small herbs left over inside of your oil mixture and you want to let that strain for about 10 to 15 minutes you can see the longer you let it sit the more oil will go through and then it also comes with a little um i don't even know what you would call this i'm just gonna call it a presser thingy <laughs> you just press it and that helps to also extract more oil from the herbs and also after you finish extracting the oil from the herbs you don't want to throw them away because you can use them again so you can just take them and put them in a plastic bag and save them for next time and as you can see most of the shebe powder is still stuck at the top so you can see that it doesn't infiltrate into the oil so it's not powdery or anything so now it is time for us to take the butter out of the freezer and as you can see it's hardened just a little bit but it's the perfect consistency now for us to start blending you just want to make sure that it's not still liquidy but it's not extremely hard, you know You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so now I'm just taking my blender and mixing it up and then the more you blend it, the more whipped it will become. And now you can start adding your oil. Um, I'm sorry for this really bad angle. I, like I said, I was making a reel for this, so my hand was in the way, <laughs> but I'm just adding the oil and continuing to blend at the same time. You can actually add the oil while the butters are melting over the boiling water, but I just find it better to not heat the oil, or, but they, they lose a little bit of their benefits if you overheat it. So it's just better to put it in um, at this step. And it's kind of hard to explain, but you can feel when it's starting to be a little bit too much oil. So I'm just adding it continuously until I can feel the consistency is getting a little too oily. I'm sure there's more professional ways of measuring the ounces and the weight and making sure that all the proportions are correct, but this technique just works for me. And since it's just for myself, it's not like I'm selling this or doing anything special with it. I just kind of play it by eye. I did notice that the butter was starting to get a little watery, so I stuck it back in the fridge for another 20 minutes, and now you can see it's a lot thicker. So I have this container that I bought off Amazon. It came in a set of three. It's a really good size. Um, I actually wasn't expecting to make as much as I did. I made a little too much, but luckily since I had three of these, I was able to fill up two of them with the hair butter. And this will last me quite a long time since I don't have much hair. And because there is no water, you don't have to worry about it going bad. Um, it has a pretty decent shelf life, at least 12 months. So now I just wanted to show you guys how I would use this in my routine. So first I have to apply a leave-in conditioner because this butter is a sealant. It is not meant to hydrate or moisturize. It is meant to seal in moisture. So I've been loving this protein leave-in by my Sonage and I just applied this all over my hair first. And now I'm gonna apply my butter. And typically I do this on days where I am not styling my hair. So I'm not using this to get any curl definition. I'm not using this, you know, to style my hair. It's really just to hydrate and protect my hair. So like I said, I applied the leave-in first and now I'm applying the butter on top to seal everything in. I really like being able to curate a butter that's specifically for my hair and my hair needs. So I highly recommend trying this out if you're looking for something to, you know, create for your hair. And of course you can do your own research to make sure that you know the butters and the oils that you're using will benefit you and help your hair i'm going to link my amazon store down below and if you go to my diy section you'll be able to find all the products and the tools that i used for this video don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and if you want me to try doing more diys and hopefully i will see you guys all in the next one bye